The views expressed on this program are those of the producers and individuals appearing on this program and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Sun Prairie Media Center staff, its video service providers, or the staff and elected officials of the City of Sun Prairie. Hello everyone, welcome into Mark Madness Sports here on this Thursday morning. I am Mark Karstens, the host, joined today by my guest uh, Peyton Schumann here on KSUN TV uh, and also 103.5 The Sun in Sun Prairie. And Peyton, how are you, I guess, first off this Thursday morning? Yeah, great. How are you? I'm doing well. Right, Thank awesome. you. And uh, I want to talk to you about your Sun Prairie West baseball team, Peyton. I know you guys, your season's over now. Um, just give an overall assessment of your team. I mean, you're... you're Team finished 18 and 11 on the season. Um, we're able to get to level three of the playoffs uh, against Middleton. I know it came up a little short in that game, 4-3 loss. It was close, really close, tight game throughout. Uh, you guys almost came back at the end because it was 4-2 for a while. And then you guys did score a run in that final inning. Benjamin Olsen got a hit. Um, I forgot who scored the run on that, that uh, hit from I Benjamin Jane, Olsen. Jaden scored. Jaden scored on that one? Okay. Um, but I remember that, and that, that got you to 4-3, and then it got competitive, and then uh, Julian Torres Otero, I know, got the last out, and he, he made contact. He, he put the ball in play and hit it to the outfield and just unfortunately went to the right fielder there of Middleton, and that ended your season. Um, but what will you kind of remember from this whole season, kind of now that it's over and you guys went 18-11 and 11 on the year? Yeah, I mean, uh, a big thing that I'll remember is just like, Kind of our resilience because um, we went on a losing streak. I think it was like in the middle of the season. We started the season the six and zero, I believe, and we went on a losing streak. And it was just like, um, you know, like getting getting guys focused. Like we were riding highs from that uh, like winning streak. And I think we just needed to get refocused and reset after we started losing. Like um, the teams we were losing to, like we can definitely beat them. Like we some of the games were tightly knit, um, lost by either like a, a an error, like a like miss like mental cue or yeah just a mental cue or and uh and you know they were just games that like we felt we should have won and um i guess like, like resilience was definitely our thing this year because um you know i mean our guys over at east like they were doing they, they had a much better record than us and we were just like man like like we gotta we gotta get back on this winning train so that we can you know like we can look like a weapon to them like they like they probably don't even look at us like a good team and um, it's like, like the t that was just all it was, you know, just um, getting refocused, um, finding that will to win, and um, I think that's what really helped us down the road to go on that playoff stretch. I mean, even then, like, even towards the end of the season, we were losing some games that we shouldn't have lost, and um, I felt like guys just got super focused during um, uh, the season, and then those games against East, we were really focused, and it's just like other games, we were kind of just like, uh, well, like you know, we we have a baseball game today. It's it's whatever. It's kind of just like the team the teams that you really want to beat. You obviously get more focused for like big rival games, and I think that was that was mainly it for us. Like when we were more focused, we were hitting the ball. We weren't making mental miscues and stuff like that. And I, that, I think resilience and um, I, I mean I just say yeah, I just say resilience was probably the main thing for us this season because um, some sometimes it can be hard seeing those losses come up and seeing your win-loss percentage go down, and it can be like, man, like we, this, this can't be a trend that we have to continue. So I think for us it was just fixing that and um, saying that, you know, we can go far if we, if we like focus up and um, just like start, start locking in and beating the teams that we know we should beat. And then like when we beat those teams we know we should beat, then we play the teams that our big rivals and that we want to be and then those are the games that we'll get super locked in for and super hype and um, I mean that was it towards the end of the season um, beat some prairie in that playoff game because we were just really locked in and um, yeah I think that was the main thing this season and uh, Peyton I want to go back to the game against Middleton and talk about Middleton a little bit they ended up winning your sectional surprise I mean mm -hmm. they were I think a four seed in your sectional I believe Peyton um, what, what do you think ultimately for Middleton got them to winning your sectional and getting to that quarterfinal game. I know they came up short there. I forgot who they played, but they played a pretty close game in the quarterfinal too. So um, give Middleton a lot of credit. They played really well let the latter half of the year. Uh, I think the coaching for Middleton was really strong and I think that's probably what propelled them as far as they made it. Yeah, um, one thing I noticed is um, that they were, they were always like shifted in the right position. 
Um, in the game we played them in the playoffs, their center fielder was just catching like every ball um, that we thought you know might have a chance of dropping. And uh, um, it was just you know th that playoff game was tough. The first two games we lost against them, um, they they were more on us. You know we kind of beat ourselves that those games. Um, but that game, you know, we out hit them by three hits. I think it was. Um, we didn't strike out a single time. Uh, we just you know, like we were hitting the ball, and they were just there. Like that's that's coaching, and they they had like really good coaching. Um, their pitchers did a good job of making us pop up and hit ground balls, and um, their defense was has always been pretty sound. Um, I don't think they made very many errors when we would play them. So uh, I think that's what led them to win the sectional because. Um, they didn't. They didn't have the greatest um, pitching, and I didn't think their hitting was the greatest either. It was just like they were very fundamentally sound, and um, I think that's what that's what helped them win the sectional. And I think their center fielder too. I feel like he was really hard to strike out. Jackson Rodemacher, I think is, is his name. Rodemacher is his last name. I know, um, but he was tough to strike out. Mm -hmm. I could tell he he kind of would shorten up his swing a lot with two strikes and uh, put the ball in play. So he he put he was kind of a player that would always put pressure on opposing teams defenses I feel like yeah yeah definitely um the fact like you, you put balls in play um make the fielders make the mistakes if, if you hit it to them obviously I mean um but yeah big thing was yeah just putting the ball in play and they, they did that a lot um they they didn't make very many errors other teams would make errors and you know errors are huge especially in playoff games especially when you know maybe your pitcher walks a few guys on base and then suddenly an error turns into a few runs and um, then like you just get a downward trend that game and it's kind of just like um, like this team's just laying it on us because they just keep on hitting the ball and they keep on making us make mistakes so I mean re yeah really good really good um, playing in the sectional by Middleton you know they just they they basically just played to survive they played to, they played to make it to the next day they yeah obviously did a good job of that but I want to get to a good memory for your team that win against Semper East mm -hmm. in level two of the playoffs, probably your best memory of this year, I would suspect, uh, getting that 9-8 victory. Uh, there was that one really strange inning where, uh, I mean, you guys were well ahead of uh, mm -hmm. uh, Semper East throughout a lot of the game. You guys, I think, got up 7-2 to two on them or something along those lines at one point. Uh, and then they had that big inning. I, it was a six or seven run inning, I think, they had. Um, to get themselves kind of back in, and then they got the lead, I think, on you guys 8-7 to seven then, and then you guys came back and scored a couple runs, and then Semper East scored one more run after that, so it ended 9-8 nine, nine, was the final. Um, but yeah, really, the only, the only big inning East, or East had, I think, was the fourth or fifth inning in that game. It was just one big inning, uh, but you guys were able to survive that. You guys were able to respond and, and come back and win that one. Yeah, um, like I said, like the games we played East, like even our coaches would say after the game, like they said, you guys were so much more locked in during warmups, and um, you know that they weren't wrong. Like we were really locked in. Um, you know, before we got there, we were like, um, players were saying like, guys, we we need to win this. Like this is one we have to win. Like we cannot lose. Um, they're gonna be putting it in our face forever, and you know they're gonna, like it was it was a game for not only to make it to sectionals but for breaking rights as well, and it's um. It was just like um, when we had that um, when we had those big innings in the beginning and got up like you said seven to two or uh, seven to one or something like that. I think I think it was seven to one because when they took that seven yep. run inning, they were up eight seven. Correct. Um, yep. Uh, yeah, I think we just kind of like I know me personally. I thought like oh it would be it would be it would be really awesome if we just mercy ruled them in their own home. Like it would be something if we mercy ruled them and then like. The same thing that happened to us the second or the yeah the second time we played them in the regular season when they beat us at their home, um, same thing happened like they were putting bunts down and stuff like that and we we knew they did small ball very well and uh, but we still just couldn't adjust to them and then um like I, like I said a few errors and uh, got way out of hand and I was in I was in center field obviously I was like man this is like this is horrible like I, I like no one expected this at all I was like you're, you're just kind of like sitting out there like thinking like when does it stop or like you know like who's who's gonna make the last play like are, are we gonna be able to make the last play because like, uh, um you know uh, when guys are making so many errors it's like you know you you can get like you can get a little scared because you can be like oh what, what if what if I make the next error like I'm just gonna feel horrible because like the, the, the can or the trend just keeps on going but it's like you you just gotta you just gotta lock in and forget all about that stuff because um you know one thing for me and uh, in center field um I know 
that game when I had a ball caught like a little a sh little short of the wall, I think. Um, uh, like, you know, when when the ball's not hit to you for a while, you can like kind of start to space out. You just gotta stay like locked into the game, and um, you know things can be running through your head. But for me, at least, the second the ball's hit into the air, like I don't think about anything. I just think about like catching the ball, like because um, if you're, if you're thinking about like errors and stuff like that, like when the ball's hit. I mean, obviously, you want to think of like where to throw the ball, like where to go. Um, before the ball is hit, like co coaches always say that that's like obviously a big thing. But like once the ball is hit, you know, you just like your one job is to catch the ball. And um, I think, yeah, you, you can lose focus when you're up that that much runs. And you you think it like like I said earlier, um, like when we were playing uh, teams in the regular season that weren't really our rivals, kind of just like oh we're just you know we're just playing another baseball game today. Like we'll 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 get it done in, like a few hours. And it's like no like you gotta you gotta stay like like I said you gotta stay locked in um they can score they can jump back like whenever they can and they did obviously and um that was a really big wake-up call and I know we got back to the dugout and we were like oh crap did we just blow our chance like are we gonna are we gonna like we're we gonna look like idiots out here like are, <laughs> are we gonna be embarrassed and it's kind of just like no like you gotta like you still have a baseball game to play it's like you gotta um have really like really good at bats at the play you know do something to disrupt them like they're they're riding a high right now they just scored seven runs in the inning and came back and um they think they have the game in the bag now you just got to take it back from them and it was a, it was a very long baseball game I think it was like one of the longest one of the longest baseball games I've ever played and um when it's like long like that and teams are scoring back and forth it can be it can be like it can get in your head like make you kind of anxious because it's kind of like uh, well, what if they what if they score like too many runs? Like, what if we're down too many runs and we just like simply can't come back? And um, I think it made a lot of the guys on on the defensive end after that ending, after all those miscues and making errors. I think it made the defensive guys kind of go like, "All right, well, we gotta we gotta find a way to make it a short ending next inning." So I think that's what it was for us. And that was a hot, humid day too, mm -hmm. Peyton. I remember I remember that one. It was warm and yeah. uh, I, I I was kind of getting. I, I, I was get about to grab something from the concession stands to drink because I was getting kind of thirsty at, at the end, by the end of that game. But um, congratulations to you guys, though, on yeah, winning that you. game uh, for Semperi West Baseball, getting that victory 9-8 uh, over East. And you guys beat them earlier in the year, too, uh, mm -hmm. and on your home turf, 3-2. to two, And then they won on their home turf, I believe, 3-1. to one. Yeah. Uh, So they were low-scoring games, the other two. Mm -hmm. And then you had that, that high-scoring affair. And uh, Peyton, you also had another game that kind of brings back sort of memories. You, you won that one as well, kind of like the East game against DeForest, where it was 10 to 9, mm -hmm. where you guys probably, I think you guys got a big lead in that one too, and DeForest clawed back, but you guys were able to hold on to beat them. Yeah, so um, that, game, that game was slightly different than East. You know, instead of um, making errors, you know, I, I think we still made some errors when DeForest was coming back, but... Um, Instead of just making many miscues, um, we took out our starting pitcher and um, our bullpen arms just couldn't find the strike zone. And um, DeForest was piecing up good at bats. You know, like they like before we pitched. I think we started Brady Rhodes that game. Um, he was doing a good job at shutting them down. And then um, our bullpen arms came in and uh, they started throwing balls. I mean, they, they can they can strike guys out, but once you start throwing balls, you know, you gotta you're getting behind in counts and you have to put some pitches in the zone, and um, the Forest guys put up some good at-bats. Uh, they have a few good players over there that can really drive the ball, and um, I think one of them hit a two-run home run or a three-run home run. And um, But it was like we were up by so much, and um, our coach, you know, found found an opportunity to put some bench players in, you know, get, get some bench player reps in, and um, they started coming back. And um, fortunately, we were able to hold them off. Um, I don't think we ever scored um, again in that game because I think we were winning like 10 to one or 10 to two, um, 10 to two I think it was. And they come, they came back and uh, we put Casey in there and um, he shut him down at the end. Um, but I mean, even then they still they still made it close. Like they were they were fighting really hard. Um, credit to them. But uh, um, after that game, our <laughs> coach was obviously angry because um, you know as a coach like you want to be able to get those um, bench players and if you're up by a lot like you you want to be able to get players reps in case you know that time happens in playoffs or another game where um, a starter gets injured and you need to get guys playing time but um, that can be a hard decision sometimes for coaches um, but uh, that that was yeah that was mainly what happened that game um, I mean, maybe we did have a bunch of errors. I didn't. I don't remember it like fully, but um, I just know that our bullpen arms were struggling to throw strikes, and uh, DeForest was getting some hits. So, yeah, that can and that can bring a team back mm -hmm. if you start to lose the strike zone and throw balls, and then the other team has some good hitters. You know, you can you can get back in the game pretty quickly. 
But Peyton, I want to get back to how you did in that game against uh, Sun Prairie East, the playoff game. So you had a fantastic game. You went two for five at the plate, four RBIs. Um, how fondly will you remember just that game? And I mean, I mean obviously that's that's great right there. Just two yeah. for five, four RBIs. Yeah. Um, the coaches put it perfectly. Like this is going to be a game that you're going to remember forever. Um, I don't. I don't think I'll ever forget it. You know. Um, some. I mean. A lot of um, parents obviously remember like the biggest games in their high school careers. Like it's still something you hold on to for a long time. And judging it was our like crosstown rivals. Um, I mean, same town, but like yeah, across the city. And like they they were friends that we were with. Um, still friends off the field, but not on the field. Like you gotta you gotta um, fight to win. You gotta have breaking rights for sure. And just like the idea of beating guys that you used to play with, um, especially when you were a lower seed and their record was much better than yours and they were like, they didn't think you were a threat at all. Like they think they would like like wipe the floor with you. And um, I mean, that's that was crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I put together some good hits at the end. I thought um, I should have gotten another one. My very last at bat, I popped out to left field. Um, uh, the pitcher laid a fastball right down the middle, and I was just early on. It hit off the uh, out, uh, hit off the end of my bat. I thought I definitely should have mashed that ball. But um, yeah, beginning of the game, um, uh, I, I mean, I was I was struggling at the plate. I was I got uh, jammed um, both my at bats. Um, I got jammed a little dribbler to um, third. I think um, that was the second at bat. The very first at bat in the game, I think I hit a dribbler to second. Um, all I know is that I got uh, jammed those um, first two at bats. Um, the Sun Prairie East pitcher, Zach Brzezinski, I'm friends with him. Um, he's a good pitcher. He uh, threw me inside um, both those pitches. And, um, you know, I had to make an adjustment during the game um, of not, not keeping my like swing super long. I was getting around the ball, and um, since he was throwing inside, I was hitting off the inside of my bat, and uh, I was just getting rung up. And obviously, you're not going to hit the ball hard that way. And that was just the story for me. So, um, yeah, and then those those two at bats um, after. Um, I think that while the fourth at bat was probably like the biggest at bat of the game, I think my third at bat was probably my best at bat because I think I got the count to a full full count and I fouled off a few um, high fastballs. Um, I, I got swinging anything close, but I fouled off a few fastballs. And um, I remember the first time or first two times we played them, um, I was struggling against the curveball. And um, he threw a few curveballs that at bat, and um, then the very last pitch, the one that I hit for a single in the left, um, he threw me a curveball. And um, I, it, I mean, his curveball was pretty good. Um, it looked like it looked like it was going to be center, and then or middle middle um, when it started, or not not when it started, but like like while it was breaking, it looked like it was going to be center center, but it just kept on breaking. It uh, got low, and so I kind of um, I kind of got my weight a little on the front leg, which. Um, you know, obviously you don't want to get weight in your front leg when you swing, but um, when you're when you're staying alive, you know, full count, um, you don't want to strike out. You just want to put a ball in play. That's what I did, and um, I actually caught a pretty nice barrel in the left field. Um, and then my fourth at bat when I got that big uh, base hit, um, I can't remember. I think it was only a three pitch at bat though. Um, he threw me, started me off with the curveball. I think that was, it, I think it was a strike. And then high fastball that um, I didn't bite at. Um, and then he threw me kind of like an inside fastball, and um, I got enough barrel on it to um, pull it to left. I think it was almost like the same spot as the second or the third at bat when I got the base hit. But yeah, um, I definitely thought I should have had um, more hits that game. But you know, it's whatever. You just got to get the hits that matter. Yeah, absolutely. And in that game, Peyton, I think something that was key too. You guys got to Brzezinski early, and he's a really mm -hmm. good pitcher. And you were able to pull him. I think he only went three innings or two innings. Yeah, I think so. Um, so they pulled him pretty early, and then Drew Cavanaugh came in. Drew Cavanaugh is a really good pitcher as mm -hmm. well over there at, at East. Um, he pitched a couple innings. You guys got some runs against him too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we were just we were hitting the ball a lot that game. We were just doing really good, and I think when they brought Drew Cavanaugh in, and we just we we still kept on hitting off of him and scoring more runs. I think. Like that was that was when most of our guys thought, oh, we have this, we have this in the bag for sure. Like this is gonna be just an easy win. Like we can we can just relax. Like we're just gonna keep hitting the ball. Just like you know, maybe they can score a few runs. Just make sure they don't score enough runs. And that's when we got lazy and complacent. They had that comeback in the game. But yeah, um, getting to Zach was obviously a really big thing for us. Um, we we kind of did it in the very first game of the season, but um, we cooled off against them. Like our bats were not awake at all compared to the playoff game against them. 
Um, I mean, I think we had 15 hits or 14 hits the game against East or something like that. I mean, it was um, it was definitely a, a barrel party for us. But um, uh, we yeah we just um, I think that that was obviously the thing that kept us in the kept us in the game was our hitting and our guys um, that would get on base and um, um, guys that would take advantage of um, errors that they made and we would score and um, yeah that was a big thing for us. It was definitely our hitting. And uh, Peyton, I, I, I want to touch on your batting average. So you had a 418 batting average on the team. It was second on the team to Jackson Hunley, who had a 432 batting average. Uh, you had 33 hits, which I think was second on the team. Jane Jung had the highest mm -hmm. hit total on the team, 38. Uh, how, how does it feel hearing some of those stats back, maybe for you and, and for Jackson and Jaden? Yeah, um, I mean, we all had really good years. Um, we all got first team all conference, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, like for us, it was just big because we were we, we were always around the heart of the order. I actually started towards the end of the order um, at the beginning of the season because um, I just wasn't wasn't hitting that good at the practices, but be before the season. But you know, I, I started hitting again and I got moved back up. But um, that's when you know when when our coach um, got the batting order um, to a good spot to where he didn't change it for a couple of games. That's when we started. Um, that's when we started hitting the ball really well, and we like saw like this is what the order should be like. This is where we found our our sweet spot in, um, on the team, and yeah, just me, Jackson, and Jaden, um, our ability to just um, hit the ball and score, guys. Um, th I mean, being the heart of the order, um, you, you're more scoring guys than. Uh, I mean, sometimes you like you obviously gotta get, everybody's got to get on base, but like um, we had a lot of RBIs, you know, score guys and stuff like that. Jaden obviously had a ton of RBIs, and. Um, yeah, that was big for us. Um, we knew that uh, like we were gonna be we were gonna be like some of the best hitters on the team to start the season, and um, it showed. And it was awesome that we were able to um, carry that over to um, towards the end of the season to playoffs as well. Um, I know uh, all of our averages dipped a little bit towards the end of the season and playoffs, but um, you know just the fact that we were able to string hits against some Prairie East and show that like you know we have these. Um, averages like we have these high averages, these high RBIs, um, these all first team all conference like recognition. Like we ha we have that for a reason, and we showed it against um, a lot of teams. And um, yeah, it was, it was just really awesome for me, Jaden, and Jackson that season um, to be able to have that much success as well. And yeah, if you want to touch more on the senior leadership of your team, I I'd love to hear that because you have five starters, I believe, that are seniors that uh, that you had as leaders. So yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, Jackson Hunley, Jaden Jung, uh, Julian Torres, Otero, and then Benjamin Olson. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, five of you guys in the starting lineup were seniors. I, I think it's just the five of you. I, I may, maybe I'm wrong on that, but um, I think, yeah, start, starter wise, um, yeah, it was just us five. Um, I know some other guys would um, come in every now and then, but um, yeah, uh, se I mean, senior senior leadership was a big thing. Um, you know, you guys obviously like look look up to seniors. Um, but um, just the ability to like have experience playing baseball and um, to say that like you know to to like when when we start losing games and um, like younger guys start getting down and then like they start like uh, making jokes and stuff like that it's like um, you just gotta you know I mean you can you can mess around and have fun um, after the game and stuff like that but you gotta lock back in during the game and um, I think it was. Uh, it was, you know, anyone can be a leader. That's something I believe in. It, you know, it doesn't come down to age or anything like that. And we had some younger leaders on our team, but um, it's obviously good to have seniors who are going to play baseball at the next level, who know what they're doing and know what, um, you know, the people expect of the program at um, Sun Prairie West. And, um, you know, like when we got on that losing streak, we're like, you know, this is this is uncanny for us. Like, it usually doesn't happen, um, but. You know, there's only one way to go from, or there's two ways to go, and you don't want to go down. You you want to go back up. Like you gotta, you gotta um, show some leadership and some passion to start winning. Yeah, and uh, I actually wanted to talk about a younger player on your team, Casey Wambach. What do you think his future is for Sun Prairie West baseball? Because I think he's got a really bright future. Yeah, I mean, he showed signs of that even this year. So. Yeah, he's he's obviously really good. Um, he's gonna get more power at the plate. Um, the older he gets to, and um, uh, I think his his um arm can only get better from now. Um, I think he's, he's obviously going to be the leader there for the um, two years that the rest of the two years is going to be there. Um, and I think uh, guys are obviously going to look up to him because he's a really great baseball talent. And um, yeah, he's just got to make sure um, to keep guys serious. Like when, um, when guys are just messing around, you know, making jokes, um, you know, everybody will do that. It like it's, it's with every team, like everybody wants to have fun and stuff like that. But um, 
just like he he brings a lot of passion to the team, which I think is going to be really good for the future. He brings a ton of passion, especially in those uh, especially in those Sun Prairie games. He brought just a, a ton of passion. It was really awesome. And uh, Brady Rhodes, he'll be another player returning. Uh, anything you want to share about him? Just I mean, he's a starting quarterback, obviously, mm -hmm. for football in the fall. So he'll be playing quarterback then, and then in the spring he'll probably be a pitcher. I'm assuming it's kind of going to be his, probably his main role as a senior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he really he really made the team mesh together because um he's a really he's a really funny guy. Like he was one one of those guys that jokes around a lot. Um I told you, but he, he knows he knows when to be serious. Um he wants to play uh um football at the next level too, I'm pretty sure. Um and um you know, he he's like he he really likes to joke around and stuff like that. Um but I think what's what's good for him is that uh you know, got guys will look up to him cuz he's obviously the starting quarterback. Um and uh, he's close with Casey. Um, they're going to be really good for this um, next year, this coming year. They're really going to um, get the team meshed together, and I, I hope they do a good job at, uh, um, you know, getting that team chemistry around everybody and um, making sure that, like, um, everybody's got a role in the team and stuff like that because um, they're both really, like, outgoing guys. Like, they love to talk and um, love to joke around, like, love to have fun with guys. Um, at, at team at team dinners too, like they'll all they'll always be like playing games with the guys and stuff like that. And um, yeah, just uh, I think they're gonna be really good for team chemistry, um, especially um, Brady as well. He's he's a really funny dude. Yeah, he seems like yeah. he sounds like he's a funny guy. Mm -hmm. So uh, I actually want to move forward here, talking about your commitment to Milwaukee Area Technical College. Mm -hmm. So first off, congratulations on your Thank commitment you. uh, to Milwaukee Area Technical College, playing baseball there and your academic journey there as well. Um, so the Stormers is their mascot, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but have you gotten to meet some of the coaching staff there? And what, what excites you about their program there, maybe baseball-wise and maybe academically too? Um, yeah, so academically, um, the good thing about that school is, like, you can really focus on what you're going into, um, even for just, like, doing your minor because it's some um, first two years. So um, just doing your minor there and uh, – um, like they have, a, they have a lot of elective classes you can choose from going into a good amount of um, science classes there because I'm trying to study exercise science. And, um, but team wise, um, they have a lot, of, a lot of team camaraderie there. I'm already in, um, like, we, like the incoming um, classes of uh, freshmen are in group chats with the rest of the guys. And um, uh, like, you know, you know, they're telling stuff what to expect. You know, I have a close friend who went there, he, he tells me, um, what they like, what they have to offer there, and what to expect. Um, they, like they said, the coach is really cool. Like he knows when to hold guys accountable. And he was actually um, a recruiter for another program that was really successful as well. So I'm actually part of his first recruiting class. Um, and uh, um, yeah, I, I think it's just going to be really good. They're going to be a really good experience. And um, I'm happy to go there. Uh, wouldn't want to go anywhere else, especially um, considering a few guys from there. I think um, four of them this year transferred out to go D1, and then a lot of them transferred out to go to other, other schools as well. well that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And Peyton, I actually want to talk to you about outfield, kind of what made you choose the outfield, what made you choose playing center field. And I know you talked to me a little bit about how you've played infield a lot mm -hmm. growing up as well. So. Yeah, so this past summer um, when I played for my club team, um, I was actually playing infield, and um, I think I, I got recruited for infield as well. Um, but then I told Coach, um, uh, I played some outfield during the fall, um, uh, Coach Bounds at MATC, I told him that I was playing outfield during the fall for um, a team he put together of a bunch of good baseball players from different club teams. Um, it was something, something we've done every year. Um, and we played down at Perfect Game, um, WW, I think, I don't know if it was a WWBA tournament, I think it was, down in Perfect Game. And um, I, played, I played really good outfield there. And... Um, uh, my coach was asking me about it, and I was, um, he was asking me about, like, um, my 60-yard dash. He's like, you, f you think you're fast enough to play outfield? I'm like, yeah, I think I am. And, uh, and he was like, all right, cool. I think I, you, definitely, you can definitely probably play outfield here. And I was like, awesome. Like, um, I, I mean, I loved going from infield to outfield. I just, I just feel like I'm more comfortable in the outfield, um, especially when I can get behind balls and really fire them and back in. And, um, yeah, I, I just really like the position out there. No, no, thank you for sharing. I'm just going to keep this short here with the fun question segment. Uh, maybe just ask you about your favorite food. What, what what's a favorite food and uh, a go to that you yeah, like to eat? Yeah, um, I have a few, but by far, you know, easily my f most favorite food is crab legs. Um, love crab legs. Um, I think uh, back when I was like 13 or 14, um, so, you know, every year we'd usually go down to Gulf Shores, Alabama, um, every spring break, 
and um, we would go to this place called The Hangout, and I had two pounds of crab legs there myself. Um, wasn't wasn't the most healthiest thing, but um, I, I mean, they're just really, really good. I have them on special occasions, obviously they're expensive, but crab legs for sure, dip them in butter, really, really good. Uh, that sounds really good, Peyton. Well, thanks so much uh, for joining me, Peyton, here on Mark Man Sports this Thursday morning. I really appreciated talking to you. Wish I wish we could have gotten to talk more, and mm -hmm. um, maybe we have to talk more in the future for sure about uh, baseball and and different things for yeah, sure. So I really appreciate having you join me here on Mark Madness Sports uh, here on KSUN TV and channel uh, 983, and then also it'll be aired on 103.5 uh, The Sun probably in the future. So uh, have a great rest of your morning, everybody, and, and thanks again, Peyton, for joining yeah, me. No on problem. Mark thanks Sports. for having me. Yeah, thank you.